Hello, this is Peter Newman. I'm a member on the ANSYS Learning Forum, and I have a question here from B. Worcester about space claim and trying to create uh, parameters or driving dimensions. And uh, I'm going to do that in ANSYS 2021R1. And uh, here I have Workbench, and I threw out a modal analysis, and i am got the pointer on the geometry. So what you can see is there's something called the parameter key, and the parameter key can be either ANS or DS. And if that prefix is in the group name, it will automatically be sent over to uh, this analysis system for parameterization. So we're going to fire up uh, space claim here. So I'll, uh, the space claim is the default, and it says starting space claim, and uh, we'll be back when it's here. Okay, space claim just started, and uh, the first thing we'll do is we'll draw a rectangle. Looks like it's still starting here. And um, there it is, rectangle, and we'll go from here to here. We'll say we want 20 and 30, and then we'll pull uh, up by 10. 10. So there's a block, and now we're going to add some parameters. And the way we do that is in the design, uh, well, with the pull tool, we can pull uh, this face and use this ruler to come back and do it from that face. And once you hit the P key, a group appears. And there's the group, and that group has a ruler dimension, and I'm just going to pin that up so it stays put. That group has a ruler dimension, uh, but I don't like the group name, so I'm going to call it length. But not just length, D DS underscore length, because I want that parameter to show up in workbench in uh, mechanical. So we can do the same thing for, we can use the pull tool on another dimension, like from here, use the ruler to go back to there, hit the P key, and we've got another group, which we're gonna call DS underscore width. And finally, uh, we can pull up with the ruler from the bottom and uh, hit the P key and the group one is created but we're going to overwrite that name and call it DS underscore height. So those dimensions are there and they do control if I want to make this uh, if I want to make click once and type 50, I get a longer thing. Uh, I'm going to illustrate one problem I see using ANSYS space claim for parametric design studies. And uh, I don't see this problem in design modeler, so I recommend people use design modeler for parametric studies. And that is, uh, if I were to sketch say on this surface, oops, uh, sketch a circle on that surface. So let's sketch an eight millimeter circle, uh, eight millimeter diameter. And we can even put a dimension on there, but uh, maybe we'll first pull it through. So there's a hole. And if we were to do the same kind of thing we've been doing, and uh, back in the design world, we want to, we want to. It's really of a move. We want to move that circle, say in this direction, relative to uh, here, and um, turn that into a parameter. Twelve. There it is. So we have yet another parameter, uh, ds underscore hole. 
So here I'll show you what I find troubling with space claim is if we go and set the length to some value back to like to uh, 20, it updates. But if we go back to 50, uh, the hole is gone. The hole doesn't exist anymore. And um, that's, that's the thing I don't like about space claim. If I were to do that in design modeler, the hole would move with the face. So um, that's the problem. But let's see how this looks in mechanical, and then we can close up the video. So we're going to refresh the project and pull the geometry in, and uh, then we'll start mechanical. Or you can just double click on model and it will refresh and open mechanical. I'll, I'll pause the video and open mechanical for us. Okay. Before I start mechanical, I just wanted to point out that a parameter set magically appeared, and that's because we used the ds underscore in here. And so if we double click on the parameter set, we can see our three parameters of length, width, and height. And we're able to now um, do parametric studies on that and put any outputs that we might create in uh, mechanical, like stress or whatever, vibration, frequency, um, for different dimensions, such as, uh, you know, 50, 20, and 10, or 80, 20, and 10, or whatever numbers you want here. Um, so I'll go ahead and fire up the mechanical. Now here we are in mechanical and we could uh, put some constraints on this and uh, make like for example under modal we could make that the fixed end and uh, that's all we really need for mechanical and insert a output and mode one uh, the thing I would be interested in is the frequency and so by clicking the P button of clicking this box and creating a P, uh, that will become an output. So if we were to mesh this and then solve this, uh, that output would show up in the table. And I'll uh, let that solve. And here it is, ready with an answer. Uh, 3216 hertz, and it's a short stubby beam. Uh, point is, if we look at the parameter set, it has that value. And if I was to hit update all design points, it would uh, fill in the values uh, for the other two rows. And uh, we can say, yes, we don't mind. If it closes, it's going to create some new geometry, solve it, and put the result in this table. So we'll let that compute. So I have some results and uh, uh, the number is starting to change. But what I think is really more interesting is if we get it down to more of a beam-like thickness of, say, two millimeters or even one. And let's uh, get that. And this time we'll also check the retain so that we can uh, go and look at the geometry at the result in mechanical. So I'll just say update all points and it let that solve that last row. So now we see a more reasonable frequency. And if we right click there and say make set as current, that will allow us to go back to mechanical and uh, see that one millimeter thick, because I don't know how many elements it put across the thickness. So we'll open this up and take a look. All right, here is our uh, model with the small diameter. And uh, what we can see is it put a one element across thickness, which I would not advise. But that's why we can uh, insert some mesh controls, such as a uh, method like on this 
called sweep. And if we tell it we want to sweep and we tell it we're sweeping from top to bottom with this, we can then say we want four elements through the thickness. And it will mesh. And that's much better. And if we hit solve, we'll see how much uh, the value changed from, I think, what were we at? 127, it's already cleared out the result. Just look quickly. And it's done solving. So the new frequency, 129, slightly uh, different. But um, there you have it. I think that explains the process of using design parameters in SpaceClaim 2021 R1. Thanks. Bye.